Hi, I'm Ellen Stoner and this video is week two of the Resultant Prism Lessons for Theory 2. Last week we talked about the formula methods for converting prism that is not just up, down, in and out into something that we can use to dot in the lens meter. So the first thing we're going to do, I've got four problems up here in the board and I'm going to get out of the way in a minute so you can see what they are. And the first thing I want you to do is write down these problems and then pause the video and use the formulas that we learned last week as a review of last week's work to write the answers to these problems in 180 and 360 notation. After you've done that, you're going to restart the video and I'm going to show you two other ways of finding those same answers without using formulas. So, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to write down these four problems and then you're going to pause the video and work the four problems out. Alright, are you through? These are the answers that you should have gotten. I wrote the first two in 180 notation and the second two in 360 notation. Um, whichever way you wrote them, these are the answers that you should have gotten. By the way, on this bottom one, it comes out to either 2.2 or 2.25, depending on how you want to write it. It came out to 2.24, and that's so close to 2.25 that, as I mentioned last week, I will go to two digits on something that's, that is something recognizable in the lens meter. So if you answered this as 2.2, that was okay also. Now that we've gotten these using the formulas, I want to show you two other techniques to do the resultant prism. The first one uses a chart, and the other one uses some, uh, some lookup tables that are basically using an Excel spreadsheet. Um, they are both of them in your Understanding Lens Surfacing textbook, if you have it, by um, Dr. Brooks. The first of the two methods that I'm going to show you is also in the Optical Formulas tutorial. And for those of you who don't have the Understanding Lens Surfacing book, um, I also have these as links in the Internet Lessons Online. So the, especially the um, Excel worksheet, you will be able to download that online. So we are now going to work each of these problems using our other two techniques. First, the chart technique. We're going to start with the first problem, three and a half diopters base down, four and a half diopters base in, and I'm going to show you how to do that without using formulas. Okay, we're back with this chart, and there are two places, again, that you can find this chart. It's in Understanding Lens Surfacing. In that book, it's in black and white, and it's also printed on the back side of the back cover, the inside of the back cover of the Optical Formulas tutorial. And there it's in color, and the reason why I did it in color is to help you use this chart. The chart is actually three different charts that have been superimposed on top of each other. And the technique that we're going to start with, where we are doing our resultant prism, we're going to start with the blue lines, or the straight lines. And if you take a look at this copy, I've made the black lines and the red lines a little bit lighter in this copy so that you can focus on the blue lines. And the important part about using this technique is going to be to learn to focus on particular parts of this chart as you're working the problem. So our first problem was a right lens. It was three and a half diopters down and four and a half diopters in. And you will recognize on this chart that I've written up here in the corners the things that I told you that you needed to memorize last week when you make the chart with the glasses. This is a right lens, 
it's down and in so for a right lens down and in is the fourth quadrant which you should have also calculated already looking just at the blue lines and looking at this as our center point down three you'll notice that the lines are actually at halves this is the one line this is the two line and this is a three line so on the straight lines this is our down three four and a half in going back to the zero going one two three four here's the blue line the straight line that's four and a half in so if I follow these two lines the three sorry three and a half down which is here so let me just take that off the three and a half down and the four and a half in I get to this point which is going to be my important point it's where the two lines cross so when you do this on your chart you don't actually want to draw your lines you, there, you want to draw them just to that point, but leave it so that you can actually see the other two parts of this chart at that point. Now what I have here is these paper, the, 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 the charts photocopied off and then in a plastic page that I can draw on. And I recommend that you do that for these exercises. I have been in wholesale labs where they have to check out PRISM, that they literally have a chart like this pasted up on the wall in a plastic sleeve so someone can draw on it just the way I'm drawing on this one. Once you have used the blue lines to find your point, that's the actual point that we need, the second thing you're going to concentrate on is the red lines. So now you're, going to, you're still on one where all, all of the lines look the same, I'm showing you one where now the red lines are dark and I've made the blue lines and the black lines a little bit lighter just to help you see those lines and what I drew the red lines and what I drew was the three and a half down and the four and a half in so on the other chart this is the point that I found and when you are concentrating on the red circles the red circles represent your actual prism amount on the, on the lens. So you want to look at this and say, okay, it's in between this circle and that circle. Then you're going to go back around to either axis, it doesn't matter which one, and see that this outer circle is the sixth diopter circle. The inner circle that it's in between is the five and a half diopter circle. So that point that we found that was the junction of the two blue lines is about halfway between the five and a half and the six. So this amount of prism is a little over five and a half. You could call it 5.75, you could call it 5.7. Once you've done that, that now gives you that amount. 5.7. I'm going to call it 5.7 because it's just not quite halfway. That's my prism amount for this resultant prism. Now you're going to look at the bicycle spokes that are black lines on my chart. And again, on the original chart, this was three and a half down and four and a half in. And this was the point that we were looking at on that chart and now I'm going to look at the bicycle spokes and on the bicycle spokes you're literally looking at that point to the center and it's, this is easiest to do if you take a ruler or a straight edge and literally have the straight edge going through the center and right through your point and you're going to read a prism amount off of the side here the one that you have in the textbook, in both of those textbooks, actually has little tick marks around the side, and each of those tick marks is one degree. I didn't reproduce the tick marks on this chart because it just made the chart too confusing for the, the camera. But you'll notice that this was above 320, and looking at it on those tick marks, it's about 322 if you're doing this on the the um, chart that's in the book it comes through 
just about at 322. So we have an axis of 322. If you are using the black and white version of this chart that's in understanding lens surfacing, it's showing your 180 notation around the bottom, so it will be showing 142. If you're using the one that I did, it shows you both 180 and 360 notation. So you will be reading directly off of the chart the fact that this is either one, uh, 322 or 142. So you got from the red lines, you got the fact that the prism amount was 5.7 from the black bicycle spokes you got the fact that your axis is either 322 when you're doing 360 notation or 142 when you're doing 120 notation. So you have here a visual representation of the resolving the um, prism from the five point, from the 3.5 base down and the 4.5 base in to 5.7 diopters down and in at 142 or 5.7 diopters at 322. Now, I would like you to take the chart. Um, I, in the instructions that you received before you got this video, you were told to make some photocopies of it or to put it in a plastic sleeve that you can draw on. And taking that second problem, which is a left lens, 1.5 base up and 0.25 base in, you should have determined that that was in quadrant two. I would like you to first take your chart and find 1.5 up and 0.5 in on the chart on the blue lines, the straight lines. Then determine which ring it is on or between for the circles and then determine which bicycle spoke it is for the axis. So we're going to pause for a moment for you to do that and then come back again. We're back again. You should have attempted to do problem two, which is the left lens up and in. And the left lens up and in is quadrant two. So we are now going to find the resultant prism for one and a half up and one quarter in for a left lens. I'm showing you now the chart that is in the formulas book. You will notice that when it's printed there in the book, I made the lines that are for full prism a little bit darker than the lines for half prism. I did the same thing for the rings, um, made the red rings that are a full prism amount a little bit darker than the rings that are half prism amount, just to try to help you uh, see what you're doing with them. So we're doing one and a half up and a quarter in. Here is the line for one and a half up quarter in is going to be halfway between 0 and 1, so there's the line for quarter in. And I come a quarter in and one and a half up, and I get to this spot. So that's using the blue straight lines. I found the spot that's the actual uh, resultant prism. I'm now going to switch to the red lines, and you will see that this is very close to the one and a half red line. It is just barely above that one and a half line. I could call it 1.6. It looks to me like it's just barely up to possibly 1.6. If you did it with a formula, you already know it's 1.5. And I will tell you now that you will not get as accurate an answer using the chart as you will when you use the formulas. So when you're using the chart, if you're taking this class from me, um, if you are within one-tenth, then I will say that your answer is correct. And the same will be with the axis. If your axis is within one degree, I will say that your answer is correct. 
and you will notice if you go take a look at the ANSI standards that the ANSI standards for prism is one third of a diopter in um, amount of prism and ANSI actually does not have a standard for axis on prism. They do for, uh, for cylinder axis but not for prism axis. So one tenth for, for my class one tenth in prism is acceptable and one degree is acceptable. If you are taking this class from someone other than me then you need to check with your instructor to find out what your instructor's tolerance will be on these. So at this point I would accept 1.5 or 1.6 for this point. That's on the red line. I am now going to hold a straight edge to this going from the center and through that point and I'm going to read where it is here off the top and lining that up a little more carefully lining it up like that it looks like we're just barely off of this main axis which shows it to be 101 and I had it at 99 when I did it with the formulas. So let's just try that again. Well, it really just goes right along the 100 axis. And again, this is not the most accurate way of doing it. The formula is the most accurate. But I'm going to say that that really looks like it goes right along that 100 axis. So I would probably have read this as 1.6 diopters at 100 and that is the way I would have done that second problem using this chart. Moving on to the third problem. The third one is in quadrant 3. The third one was 3.0 base down, 3.0 base out. And it's a right lens. And so for right lens, base down and out is quadrant three. So I am going to go over on the straight blue lines, I'm going to go over three, and I'm going to go down three. I'm going to use the blue straight lines to get over to the point where those two cross. Looking now at the red circles, the point where those two cross looks like it's right halfway between these two circles. This circle is the four, that's the four and a half, so I would say this is four and a quarter. And if you did it with the formulas, you know that it's 4.2. So my four and a quarter, I would have written it as 4.25. And then using a straight edge, going from the center through the circle, in this case, you see that, that, that the point that I circled is just right on this axis line. And that axis line is the 225 or the 45. So I would have written from using it from this chart, I would have written that as 4.25 at 225 or left lens, I'm sorry, right lens base down and out at 45. I would like you to notice something and what I want you to notice is that on each of these charts I've made this line that is half of the quadrant a little bit darker and a little bit longer. If you're in and out or up and down or exactly equal, then you are always going to be on that line that exactly splits the quadrant in half. If you are above that line, then your up or down is bigger than your in and out. If you are below that line, your in and out is bigger than your up and down. And that's another way for you to look at reasonableness when you are doing these problems. 
is to notice whether your up and down is the larger of the two numbers or whether the in or out is the larger of the two numbers. If your if you're up and down is larger, then it is going to be in this upper half or lower half. If the in and out is larger, then it's going to be on the horizontal side of your 45 or 135 meridian. Going to the fourth problem, which was two diopters base up, one diopter base out for a left lens. The left lens up and out is quadrant one. I'm going to go up two and I'm going to go out one and on the blue or straight lines I'm going to come to this crossing point on those lines looking at the red rings that looks to me like it's halfway between the two and the two and a half so I would call it two and a quarter and then using my straight edge going through the center and through the crossing point of those two lines it's coming out at the top here right about there which looks to be the 60, 61, 62, it's between 62 and 63 and what we actually got with the formula was 63. So I would accept for this two and a quarter, I would have also accepted 2.2 or 2.3 and then for the axis either 62 or 63 and what we got with the formula was 63. So that's our chart method of finding resultant prism. And it's something that you need to practice because you need to learn how to see these charts. I know more opticians of the opticians who do prism. I know more opticians who use the charts than I do who use the formulas because they're visual and you're not having to remember rules like what you're adding to the axis or, or subtracting from it. The third method is basically using some charts that are basically Excel worksheets. You can find these printed in the back of Understanding Lens Surfacing by Dr. Um, Clifford Brooks if you have that book. You can also download it from the lessons, from my lessons, my theory lessons on the internet. If you can't do either one of those and you want to try this method and you know someone who knows how to do an Excel worksheet, it's a very easy chart to do because it's simply using the formulas. What it has is your vertical amount down the side, which is either up or down. Across the top you have the horizontal prism, which is your in and out. This particular chart and the one that Dr. Brooks has published in Understanding Lens Surfacing uses these prism amounts in quarter diopters of prism. So if you have something that's in between quarters, then you're going to be coming up with an answer that's close but not exact. If you like this method and you end out doing a lot of PRISM and you need more accuracy than that, you can, as I said, just you do an Excel worksheet or find someone who has the knowledge to do it and create it in tenths on, across the top and down the side. And basically what's in each of these cells is the answer to the formula. So for instance, for our problem one, which was 3.5 down and 4.5 in. 3.5 down is our vertical, so here's 3.5 down. 4.5 in was our horizontal, so here's 4.5 in. And I'm simply going to read down this column and across this row. And the cell that is down the 4.5 column and in the 3.5 row is 5.7 and that was the answer to the formula when we did the um, vertical squared plus horizontal squared equals square root. That simply gives you the answer to the formula. So on that one you have the amount of prism. On the chart that you'll find in Understanding Lens Surfacing 
these two that I've broken apart are actually all printed together and when you do that going down the 4.5 and in the 3.5 you will find two numbers there the first one will be that 5.7 and the second one will be this 38 I broke it into two charts because I find it easier to read that way and the 38 is the answer that you get when you use the formula. So 38 would have been the axis when we did our um, vertical over horizontal inverse tangent. Now you have to know that you are in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 2 you subtract that from 180. So you have to go back to the rules that we learned last week and say, okay, the 38 is not my final answer. I subtract it from 180, and when I subtract 38 from 180, I get 142. So in this case, you need to know your quadrant, and you need to know the rules for the quadrant. That's the way you use these, these um, charts. Using the second problem, The second one was 1.5 up and a quarter in. The vertical is down the side, so 1.5 is this row. The, two, the 0.25 in is this first column. Going down that column to this row is 1.5, and that was the answer you got with the formulas and the answer that we got with the chart. And then with the axis, going down 1.5 and in a quarter I get an axis of 81 again you needed to have determined that this was in quadrant 2 and therefore was going to be subtracted from 180 180 minus 81 is 99 and that's the answer that you got if you used the formulas because they used the formulas to create these just Quickly to finish this up, problem number three was three down, three out. Here is the three out, here's the three down. Drawing across, I have 4.2. That's what you got with the formula. Three down, three out. This gives me 45, and that's the axis. And again, you needed to remember that this was quadrant 3. So if you were doing 180 notation, you would leave it as 45. If you were doing 360 notation, you would have added that to 180 and gotten 225. And then problem 4 was 2 up, 1 out. So here's the vertical 2, here's the horizontal 1. The amount that this shows is 2.2. And what we actually got was 2.24, which I chose to round to 2.25, but 2.2 is actually the answer rounded to tenths. And then our 2 up and our 1 out for the axis gives us 63 and you then needed to determine that as a left lens this was quadrant 1 and you leave the 63 alone so the answer was 2.2 at 63 or 2.2 base up and out at 63. That gives you the three methods for doing resultant prism using the formulas, using the chart, or using the tables, which are basically just telling you the answers to the formulas. You are going to need to be able to do all three ways, so I want you to practice doing all three ways. If you are taking this course from me, at some point, either on a quiz or a test, you are going to, I'm actually going to give you these and have you draw on them and, and uh, so that I can determine that you have actually learned how to use all three methods. In real life, you need to do enough of each of these three methods to determine which method works best for you and then concentrate on doing it that way. 
one of the reasons why I want you to do it all three ways is because you can actually use them to validate what you did. You remember that I've told you repeatedly that you should be able to determine what a reasonable answer is. Most of the people that I know end up using this method using the chart. But if you also know how to use these tables, then once you've used the chart, you can use the table quickly and easily to validate that you did your drawing correctly. So that's one way of just checking yourself. That takes care of this week's lesson. It's a short video because you're going to spend a lot of time. I would like you to go back and do all of the exercises that you did last week and use each of these other two methods. Just do them for practice. You should get fairly quick and easy at them. They should start making sense to you. They're going to help you, especially doing it with this chart, is going to help you visualize what quadrant you're in and what the axes should look like. So that completes the video for this week. Next week's video is going to be on resolving PRISM. We're going to start with what were essentially the answers this week and we're going to learn how to resolve them back into the vertical and horizontal. So that's it for this week and I will see you next week.